A warm welcome to your Barbados Today evening news update for Friday, October 22. It's a tough decision, but the right move. That's how Health and Wellness Minister Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick describes the island's new travel protocols, which will allow vaccinated travelers with negative PCR test results on arrival to go straight to their homes or hotels without the need to be tested again or be quarantined. At a press conference this evening, Bostick acknowledged concern about the move, but armed with the data, he made clear that positive cases among travelers are low. In August, we would have had about 18,000 persons visiting. And we had a positivity rate of persons with non-Barbadian ID cards, and that is how we identify those. And I will explain something about that. Of less than 1%. In fact, 0.66%. Same thing, September and October, less than 1%. 0.53, 0.46%. That is what we have been seeing coming out of the travelers coming into Barbados. But even some of those cases are persons who actually reside here, but who are non-nationals and do not carry Barbadian ID cards. Some of the cases are also travelers who would have tested positive for their departure test, or, or in other words, the test that they're required to get back into their country or to wherever they're, else they're, they're going on to. And interestingly enough, if you look at the number of positive cases that we've been having over the last six weeks or so, and you decided that you will utilize one day's result, I want to put it to you that one day's result of positive cases of the community transmission, persons who reside in Barbados, accounted for more than the total cases for one month of persons traveling into the country. He stressed that the vast majority of positive cases on island are within communities and government is shifting its resources to step up testing to arrest the current spike in COVID-19 cases. So we're looking to expand our testing capacity with, for community transmission persons who, who need testing by having another two or three sites for testing, including Queen's Park, which is centrally located and easily accessible to persons we will announce the other sites later. We, we have to go in that direction to take some of the load off of the major testing sites, the two polyclinics mentioned and the gymnasium. And we also have to engage the services in some instances with our private sector partners for them to be able to assist with testing to reduce the numbers, reduce the waiting time, and also to take some of the burden off of the resources that we have at our disposal, that is the public sector resources. Health officials reported the highest number of positive COVID-19 cases in a single day, 427 new cases from a total of 2,555 tests conducted on Thursday. Authorities are now monitoring another outbreak at the psychiatric hospital. 63 cases today and about 46 cases that we would have had yesterday. Dr. Ford is going to go into the details in relation to the psychiatric hospital, but I just want to say that this is something that we have had to do before, not only at the psychiatric hospital, we've been dealing with a situation at the geriatric hospital or St. Michael District Hospital, and we've also been dealing with two elderly care facilities all at the same time, but I'm happy to report that given what has happened at these other facilities, that I have the greatest confidence in Dr. Ford and his team to be able to successfully manage this developing situation. Infectious disease expert Dr. Corey Ford describes the current outbreak as the perfect storm, and he made clear that if the island is to return to some sense of normalcy, then Barbadians must be vaccinated. He challenged Barbadians who have not yet had the job to do so within the next three weeks. But if we're going to get to the other side, it's going to take a large response from the general public in this country. And I'm going to give you a challenge this evening, not planned, but from above. I can give you a challenge, right? I'm going to give the country a challenge that you get this country 
before the actual water gift dates, but by the middle of next month, I would love every single Barbian who has the opportunity to get vaccinated to help us on the ground, to help our challenge on the ground. I really would like you to step forward and do it. By the 15th, call in a day. You may be wrong for doing that, PM. But by the 15th of November, I am pleading with all Barbadians in this country to add wisdom and common sense to your daily living. If you're not sure, pray to God, he can give the answer. Right? And I'm, I sure know what the answer is because he's speaking to me as I speak to you. Right? I'm asking you to protect the healthcare workers and protect this country. As of Friday, more than 146,300 Barbadians have been given at least one shot of the COVID-19 jab and just over 119,870 people have received two shots. This means that just over 44% of the eligible population is considered fully vaccinated against the COVID-19 virus. Meanwhile, there's concern that a growing number of COVID-positive patients are refusing to go to isolation facilities. Dr. Adana Grandson, the consultant manager of the Home Quarantine Program, says it's a worrying development. Right now, we have 373 persons who have refused transportation and escalation of medical care. And I want to appeal to all Barbadians, please. I know that there are some persons who are very scared or think there is a, a need to be scared to go into an isolation facility like Harrison Point, Black Mongola, Sun Bay, any of the facilities across the island. But I want to remind you that this, these facilities, I should say, are the best equipped facilities that we have on the island to manage COVID positive patients. This assessment does not always necessarily mean that you will have to stay at the facility, but the beautiful thing about being able to have an assessment at the facility is that if the healthcare workers at the facility think that from a clinical standpoint, that you require an escalation of care, they can provide the necessary care that you need at that time. The reason why we attempt to flag persons either red or yellow is because we want for you to get the necessary care that you need early. Government is pressing ahead with the planned establishment of safe zone despite some objections. In fact, Prime Minister Mayor Motley said come November 1, the first of such zones will be implemented in the public health care facilities. The bottom line is, is that for whatever reason, there are people who cannot take it, either because of medical reasons or serious philosophical reasons. In those circumstances, we are saying that we accept that the only way to the destination is not vaccines. We accept that testing can also give us an idea of safety. But we know it is cumbersome. And because we know it is cumbersome, we will guarantee you in your workplace. That is why we talk about the safe zones. I'm informed by the Minister of Health that, that the work that was done and the consultations that have been done with respect to the healthcare workers and with respect to the healthcare institutions and nursing homes, I've actually seen the draft um, that they were able to complete. We've sent it to PAHO. And it is our anticipation that we will be in a position to have that safe zone in healthcare institutions and workers by the 1st of November operational. When I spoke to you on the last occasion, I also told you that we were looking at other frontline workers for the guidance notes to come as well. And those other frontline workers will be police, prison officers, soldiers, um, customs and immigration. And then, of course, the main one for us, which is, in fact, our hotel and tourism workers and, and um, workers in restaurants used predominantly in the tourism sector, as well as tourism attractions. There's regional and international news after this short break. I'll admit, when the COVID-19 vaccines were first introduced, I was a bit skeptical. I wondered, how did they create these vaccines so quickly? I heard so many theories and was suffocated by all the noise. But once I did my own research and began speaking to my friends in the field, I got the facts and decided to take the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. I am now proud to say that I'm fully vaccinated. I am one who believes in choice, but I also know that with each choice comes consequences. COVID-19 vaccines have been proven to provide a layer of protection against COVID-19. We have been in this situation for far too long now. It is time to get our lives back. 
we still need to social distance, wash our hands and mask up, but having an extra layer of protection with the COVID-19 vaccines, we should feel more happy that we're protecting ourselves, our family and friends, our colleagues and our clients. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. On the regional scene, Jamaica's Prime Minister Andrew Holness is paying keen attention to lawsuits that have been filed by two groups of employees challenging vaccine mandates at the workplace. Ocean Masters of Television Jamaica reports. All workers of AIC Jamaica and five CARMED employees are seeking to challenge the mandatory vaccine policy instituted by their workplaces. They are seeking injunctions to stop the companies from enforcing the policy as well as declarations that constitutional rights have been breached or are about to be breached. Prime Minister Andrew Holness commented on the development during a vaccination mobilization tour in Clarendon on Thursday. I don't think it is in anyone's interest to have the government impeded in any way in managing the pandemic uh, by having these matters litigated. I think it is therefore wise for the government to carefully order its steps in these matters to avoid going and getting tied up into court proceedings. The Prime Minister says that's why the government has been deliberate in its approach in getting the population vaccinated against the COVID-19 virus. However, he says a global conversation has led local companies to go the route of mandatory vaccination. In a press conference, I was very clear to the public that the government was not considering mandates, especially in the sense that the public interprets mandates, which is compulsion, that somebody is going to come and drag you into a, a clinic and stick you in your arm. Mr. Holness says he has been touting differential treatment for those who have been vaccinated. Treat Further afield, the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID vaccine showed more than 90% efficacy against the coronavirus in a clinical trial of children 5 to 11 years. In documents submitted to the FDA, the drug maker said 16 children in the Pfizer-BioNTech trial who were given a placebo got COVID-19, compared with three who received the vaccine. With nearly 2,300 children in the trial and more than twice as many given the vaccine than the placebo, that equates to better than 90% efficacy. FDA advisors are scheduled to meet Tuesday to vote on whether to recommend the vaccine for that age group. The study did not show any new safety concerns, but both Pfizer and Moderna vaccines have been linked to rare cases of heart inflammation, called myocarditis, particularly in young men. Pfizer suggested the rate of myocarditis in the 5 to 11 age group was likely to be lower than in 12 to 15 year olds. It also estimated that the number of COVID-related hospitalizations prevented by vaccination was many times higher than the number of potential cases of myocarditis. If the FDA authorizes the vaccine for children 5 to 11 years old, CDC advisors will meet on November 2nd and 3rd to make recommendations on how the shot should be administered. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.